Hi, in this video lecture I will discuss about the helium neon gas laser its uh, principle construction and working myself Dr. Sushil Kumar and the first point is about the introduction of the helium neon gas laser it was uh, invented by Javan Bennett and Herr Riot in 1961 Helium neon laser is a poor level laser. Its uh, usual operation wavelength is 632.8 nanometer in the red portion of the visible spectrum. It uh, operates in continuous working mode. So as you know that uh, e any laser has three major components. One is the medium that what laser medium uh, is used to construct the laser here in helium neon gas laser you know that is the helium and neon gas mixture second point comes about the pumping process that what type of pumping is used to populate the energy levels that is here atom atom in elastic collision and third point comes about the resonator cavity in which uh, all these process basically runs that is the assembling of the two mirrors right one is perfectly reflector and second one is the partial reflector so here first of all i will discuss about the energy levels that how transition basically take place in between the energy levels and especially for the four energy levels which is the main component of uh, helium neon gas laser and second point is about the population inversion so you see here there are four energy levels this is the ground and lowest one is the ground state the upper one is the excited state and this level is represented by E2 and there are number of atoms n2 in ground state the that is the level e1 energy level e1 and there are n1 are the number of atoms and third point comes about this energy level that is represented by e3 and there are n3 number of the atoms and f about the fourth energy level that is represented by E4 and the number of atoms into this particular energy level are N4. So in addition to this basic information we know the ground state is the lowest state of the atom and this is the excited state of the atom. In between of the ground state and the excited state all the states are known as metastable states. So the next one is about the metastable state. The lifetime of the metastable state is higher as compared to the ground state. So here you know that this is the excited state and the lifetime of the excited state is about 10 raised power minus 8 seconds and the lifetime for the metastable state is about 10 raised power minus 3 second so you see that the difference between the excited state and the metastable is about 5 times right so metastable state have lifetime 10 raised power minus 3 second and here the for the excited state that is about uh, 10 raised power minus 8 second right so now about the metastable state the lifetime here is 10 raised power minus 3 second so now the question about fast transition or slow transition fast transition you know that the lifetime is very small this is uh, 10 raised power minus 8 second as compared to the metastable state that is ten, about 10 raised power minus 3 second so you can imagine that the atoms which lies into the excited state immediately jumps into the 
this particular state so the transition will be fast as compared to the transition from this state to the this particular one state that is the e4 because lifetime is uh, longer as compared to the excited state so most of the atom will stay here longer as compared to the excited state and because of that this transition will be slower this transition will be slow so all the atoms immediately jump into this particular state transition is fast or slow transition will be fast atoms stay here longer right so that transition will be slow or fast that transition will be slow and how i am telling that this transition is slow or fast on the basis of time this lifetime of the state here the lifetime is about 10 raised power minus 3 second so this is the lifetime and on that basis one can say about the fast transition and slow transition right so now the population inversion is achieved in between these two states right as you know that in general the number of atoms are more into ground state right n1 is greater than n2 or any other number of the in any energy levels so n1 is greater than n2 or any other states n2 or n3 or n4 whatever the energy levels are available we are talking here about the four energy levels so in all the cases n1 will be larger as compared to the other number of the atoms but this situation is in general condition right so in general the maximum number of the atoms will be in ground state and minimum number will be into the excited state right and in this particular situation when population inversion is achieved then that time population inversion is achieved where in between the metastable state and the excited state and the ground state in which state this one and the this one in these two population inversion is achieved you know that the lifetime of this state is longer as compared to the excited state so all the atoms basically starts to accumulate here in the during the process and in the ground state in this the number of atoms will be smaller as compared to this one so this particular situation is known as the population inversion means large number of atoms into the excited state compared to the ground state means population has been inverted as compared to the general case so this situation is favorable for the stimulated emission process and through that you get the laser light so from this energy level that is the uh, that is correspond to the e3 and n3 and this one is the e4 and n4 are responsible for the laser light so you will get the radiative laser transition from these two energy levels where you have observed this population inversion here right so the transition will be slow first thing the transition will be radiative transition you know that all the atoms which jump from the excited state here comes into this particular metastable state not always jumps into the ground state by stimulated emission process some of them also jumps spontaneously and the photon 
which emits basically due to the spontaneous emission process can ignite the induce the other atoms which are into the excited states and because of that the excited atom now will emit two photons of the same frequency and into the same direction right so now the two two photons which emits because of the stimulated emission process will be of same frequency and in same direction right direction is same frequency is same and because of the frequency you know nu is equal to c upon lambda if frequency is same that means there is only one wavelength and that wavelength represent to a particular color so this is one of the point that frequency is same phase is same so because of that you say that uh, laser light is monochromatic and unidirectional because all the photons are in emitting into a same direction right so one photon which emits from the spontaneous case is responsible to induce the other excited atoms and then after the other photons can induce the other excited atoms of the metastable state and this is the uh, reason this is the cause of laser light right so here in this process stimulated emission dominates over the spontaneous case this uh, energy level e4 is very close to the ground state right and so here you see that this is known as the non radiative transition and fast transition it means all the atoms which accumulate here after the transition of photon immediately jumps into the ground state here this is the ground state because the they jumps into the ground state by collision with the walls in which they are kept right so that is the non radiative transition so in the next slide uh, we will see the procedure construction uh, some points about it the setup basically consist of a discharge tube of length 80 cm and bore diameter of the uh, discharge tube around 1.5 cm it can vary basically from uh, 50 cm to 80 cm or diameter from 0.5 cm to 1.5 cm and the gain medium of the laser as suggested by its name is a mixture of helium and neon gas gases uh, with the ratio of 5 to 1 to up to the 20 to 1 where 5 represents the helium atoms and 1 represent the uh, neon atom right so this 5 here uh, this ratio is the ratio of helium and neon atom it can vary up to the 20 to 1 here 20 is for the helium atoms and one is for the neon atom uh, and as you know that uh, neon is responsible for the laser light in case of the helium neon gas laser so all these bit uh, basically are kept into the el electric uh, gas uh, electric discharge tube the length uh, and the diameter is mentioned here right the, the energy or pump source of the laser is provided by an electrical discharge of around 1000 volts through an anode and cathode at each end of the glass tube the optical cavity of the laser typically consists of a plane high reflecting mirror at one end of the laser tube and a concave output coupler mirror right a mirror of approximately uh, 1% transmission at the other end helium neon laser 
optical output power range vary from 1 milliwatt to the 100 milliwatt right so the main part is the lasing medium second is the pumping process and third about the resonator cavity in now by this a uh, block diagram i will try to explain how basically it works so in laser light comes from 3s to 2p orbital transitions of the electron and that out output is of the order of 6328 angstrom one angstrom is equal to the 10 raised power minus 10 meter so what happens initially initially one electron basically accelerated electron is strike with the helium atom and excite it into this way right so first of all we excite the helium atoms and then after this excited helium atom collide with the ground state of neon atom and because of that this collision of the heli excited helium atom a uh, neon atom comes into the their metastable state right ratio we have discussed earlier that is the 10 to 1 where 10 uh, is for the helium atoms and 1 is for the neon atoms uh, these are two mirrors this is the completely reflector this mirror is a mirror this is perfectly reflector this one is the second mirror right a mirror b this is partially reflector here blue color indicate to the neon atom and this red color ball indicate to the helium atom right so initially in beginning what happens this helium atom is strike with the neon atom and as a result they transfer their energy to the neon atom and neon atoms right now is into the excited state when the neon atom comes into the ground state it basically emits the photon and that photon basically run parallel to parallel to the axis of the glass tube and as a result of multiple reflections right when the cavity filled out, filled up then the photons come out from this tube and as a result you observe this laser light so this is the for discharge purpose red color and high potential as uh, we have discussed earlier that is of the order of 1000 volt when this voltage is applied to the system electron basically accelerate in between this and uh, you know that uh, helium and neon both are inert gases and it is very difficult uh, to excite uh, neon in that particular metastable state directly so we use indirectly this uh, way of the helium uh, first of all we excite the helium atom uh, in excited state by the collision of electron that electron comes from the cathode all right and they strike with the uh, this helium atom as shown here by this reaction in terms of the energy level we we'll discuss uh, in the next slide and then after this excited helium atom collide, collide with the ground state neon atom and because of this uh, now the helium atom transfer their energy to the neon atom and neon atom now is into the their excited state but which uh, uh, energy states are responsible for the laser light they are 3s and 2p orbitals in which uh, we get the laser light that is 6328 angstrom so red color light so here with this energy level diagram uh, you can understand better that Uh, earlier first of all these this is the ground state of uh, helium atom right so we provide electric discharge method so by this way helium atom excite into two different states one is correspond to the triplet state and second is correspond to the singlet state 
what do you mean by triplet and singlet state basically in helium if you see there are two electron a one elect these orientation of these electrons inside the atom may be parallel or anti parallel if this is parallel then you know that uh, spin angular momentum for one electron is plus 1 by 2 in upward direction and minus 1 by 2 in downward direction so plus 1 by 2 and plus 1 by 2 in, uh, in upward direction is equal to you know that is 1 so because of that a uh, we find multiplicity multiplicity is defined by 2s plus 1 and uh, when we put the value of s that is equal to 1 here so 2s plus 1 becomes 3 so multiplicity if is 3 we call it triplet state and this is the total angular momentum spin angular momentum that is 1 right so this is the name of the state by using the multiplicity 2s plus 1 and uh, what about this singlet and uh, the second possibility of these two electrons in excited state of the helium might be one is upward and second is downward so plus 1 by 2 and this is minus 1 by 2 so the total result of spin angular momentum uh, will be zero right one is plus 1 by 2 and four downward you know that that is minus 1 by 2 so plus 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2 Plus one by two, you know that is for the upward, and minus one by two is for the downward electron. So total result is equal to sum of these two. Its spin angular momentum will be equal to zero. This is equal to zero. So S is equal to zero when you will put this value here in multiplicity formula. That is 2s plus 1. S is equal to 0, so this will be equal to 1, right? And total spin angular momentum is 0. So here you see that this is 1, that is coming from the multiplicity, and this is 0, that is total angular momentum. So this is singlet state, and this one is the triplet state. the energy of these two different states of helium atom is near about 18 point something right 18.6 uh, electron volt and uh, for the singlet that is about 20.61 electron volt here you see this is the 20.61 electron volt this energy is just near about to the metastable state of the neon atom that is about 20.66 electron volt so by this way one use this helium atom to excite the neon atom so now 20.61 electron volt is the excitation energy of helium atom rest of the point 05 electron volt energy the difference between these two energy is point 05 electron volt from where this energy comes because this is 20.61 electron volt and this is 20.66 electron volt so this point 05 electron volt energy comes from the collision from the uh, right this helium atom is excited in excited state and it is vibrating so that have basically 
in addition to this one 20.61 electron volt 0 0.05 electron volt is the kinetic energy of the excited helium atom so the total energy becomes 20.66 electron volt and this is the metastable state of the neon atom right so 3s because of this energy 20.66 electron volt when transferred to the neon atom here this is the neon atom so when this 20.66 electron volt is total energy from the helium side this excitation energy and this kinetic energy 0 0.05 electron volt transfer to the neon atom and neon atom comes into this particular state that is the metastable state of the neon atom is known as 3s where 3 is the cell and s is the orbital so correspond to the singlet uh, we uh, get this 3s or uh, 3s state that is the metastable state of the neon atom and correspond to the triplet we get the 2s state of the neon atom which is about 18.6 electron volt right so now the point is about the laser light so now we got that 3s is the metastable state of the neon atom and now neon atom will come into the ground state there are two possibility first of all for this state 3s one is this one transition into the 2 3p and second possibility is into the 2p right so this 3p is near about to the 3s and uh, the wa uh, wavelength basically which we observe from the transition of the electron between these two states and in terms of the photon that is 3.39 micrometer in, in the range of infrared radiation second point is about transition between 3s and 2p uh, in between these two that is uh, basically 6328 angstrom and this is the laser light uh, right so here the metastable state is 3s and the second state is 2p and then from here the atoms after the transition of photon of this particular wavelength comes into the ground state that is the 1s state this 1s star basically it means that this state right now this state is ground state 1s state but is a little bit higher from the actual ground state so how the atoms basically now come into the actual ground state in this one that is the diffusion with the walls right so atoms basically when comes into this state they lose their energy with the collision with the wall right and as a result comes into the actual ground state so here you know that the helium neon gas laser is of four energy levels so three energy levels of the neon atom one two and you consider it three because it is near about to the ground state and the atoms neon atom lose that energy the difference between the actual ground state and the this particular one as a star by diffusion with the wall so these are the three energy levels of the neon atom and one is uh, of the helium atom this upper one that is correspond to the singlet so these four energy levels play the role in helium neon gas laser and which orbitals are important in which you see the transition they are 3s and 2p energy levels 3s is the metastable state of the neon atoms this one and 2p is the lower state and from here you will 
obtain the fast radiative transition it means the transition will take place spontaneously from 2p to the 1s star this transition this transition will be spontaneous right so that transition will be fast and it will be radiative transition so this is the energy level diagram of the helium neon gas laser i have uh, just focus only on the two different state of the helium on the basis of spin angular momentum that is sing that is the singlet and triplet singlet is responsible to excite the neon atoms total excitation energy in case of metal stable state of the neon is 20.66 electron volt and here the excitation energy of the singlet is 20.61 electron volt rest of the energy comes from the kinetic energy of the excited helium atoms right so the uses of the helium neon gas laser are uh, number 1 This is the narrow red beam of helium neon laser is used in supermarkets to read barcodes number 2 the helium neon laser is used in holography in producing the 3d image of the objects number 3 application of the helium neon gas laser have many industrial and scientific uses uses and are often used in laboratory demonstration of optics thanks thanks for watching this video if uh, this uh, discussion is helpful to you then please like and subscribe this video channel thanks once again